My name is Anthony James, and I love the German Netflix show Dark. I love it so much that I started a YouTube channel to talk about it. From the start, I've been told that the Dark Train won't last forever, and if I want to continue to grow on YouTube, I need to move on. Well, you know what? I don't want to move on. This show is worth more. It's worth more theories, more analysis, deconstruction, and discussion. So if you're not ready to move on either, then you're in the right place, right here on Dark Discussions. Ema. Yeah? I've just noticed the poll for dark discussions this week is a tie between a character study for Claudia and the origin world family tree. What should I do? I don't know. Oh, uh, a letter came for you today. Ah. He that has eyes to see and ears to hear may convince himself that no mortal can keep a secret. If his lips are silent, he chatters with his fingertips. Betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. Do a Claudia character study on the next episode of Dark Discussions. By doing this, you will find what you were looking for. Origin World Family Tree it is. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Dark Discussions. I'm Origin Anthony James, your host. Now, this week, we're going to focus on the Origin World Family Tree. Now, I know, I know, I said that I would go by the vote. And it was technically a draw. Half people voted, f half the people who won the vote wanted a Claudia character study. And the other half wanted the Origin World Family Tree. And not very many people wanted the incestuous themes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on two of the things. The character study for Claudia, I'm going to leave this week. I'm going to include it in the vote. It technically didn't win. Uh, but I'm gonna, I want to give that its full video. I want to take the incestuous themes off my vote as well, off the, off the poll. Because I don't really think that's ever going to win. Because people just don't feel right about voting for the incest. So because I'm going to take that off, my main point about that, about the incestuous themes, is going to be in this video. But the rest of the video is going to be about the origin world family tree. So actually, I'm going to leave the, the incestuous point to the very end of the video. And that is going to be about Helen Albers, Katarina's mother, and sort of how Katarina came to be. There's been a lot of discussion about that on my channel so far, and it's something I want to clear up, and I've also found a little nugget of new evidence. Okay? Now, before I get into the Origin World family tree, I just want to say, Dark Discussions is now available on all audio apps. Not, not all audio podcasting apps, but the same ones that you'll find the After Dark podcast on. Okay? So that's the main ones, like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio something, radio cast, radio podcast, something like that, um, and Apple podcasts, like all the main ones you'll find it on. If it was a podcasting app that told me that they wanted to own part of my uh, podcast, or they, that they had the rights to it, well, then I just told them where to go. So if it's, if it's a genuine podcasting app, that usually most of the real big ones don't actually ask you to own your podcast, so it's probably on there, okay? Um, all right, so now, as always, we're going to also have your YouTube uh, comments. Uh, so if you're listening on audio apps for this episode, can you please make sure that you come over to the YouTube comments and give me your your uh, uh, ideas and really join the community. I am still thinking of and trying to plan and I even started maybe setting up a Discord for this community. So any uh, questions or any uh, comments, you could, we could also have a continuous discussion in that, in that Discord. It'd be nice to center us there, people from all the different platforms. But uh, until then, the YouTube comments will suffice. So I'm going to have them again so if you want to leave a comment about what i'm talking about in this video or or you want to suggest maybe something that could if i like the idea of it i'll put it in um apart from that there's a little bit of uh interest there's a little bit of something that i need to talk about later on but i'm not going to mention it now 
Um, one of the one of the comments from the YouTube uh, thing is sort of give me a hint of what to do going forward with this video, uh, these vid this video series. So keep an eye out for that um, in the in the YouTube comments section. Okay, so let's get right into the origin family tree. So the way I sold it to you last week was I said I want to talk about what characters exist, what characters could exist. So I'm going to focus for the beginning of this on what characters could exist. So, all right, the first one of this, you're gonna to have to go with me on, okay? So my first idea is, I thought to myself, well, Egon and Hannah both exist in the origin world. So is it possible in some way, no matter how creepy it is, let's forget about the creepiness for the minute, is it possible that Cecilia exists? My answer to that is yes, it's possible. Now you can see even the, the picture that I've chosen uh, is not one of teenage Hannah because it is very creepy, right? But let's imagine Hannah turns 20. Egon doesn't die of cancer in this world, in the origin world. Let's imagine he doesn't die of cancer. And then he's about maybe, what, 75. She's 20. Okay, creepy as hell, but weirder things have happened. So let's take that very big if and nugget of of creepiness obviously we're not going to get into the science I, I'm, I'm neglecting the science of like you know it had to be the particular sperm at the particular time just for fun i know that, that my whole theory here is, is is out the window because of that but just for fun let's forget about it <laughs> all right just for fun so let's say egon and, and hannah actually had cilia next up i'm thinking what about bartos then because we know that if regina wasn't in the forest when Boris arrived in Vinden, um, she wouldn't have been able to save him and help him. So therefore, he probably just died of that gunshot wound. So she didn't actually ever really meet him. And the reason, the only reason she was there was because uh, of Ulrich and Katarina. Um, and, and Katarina started like sort of, you know, like he came out to save Regina from Ulrich and Katarina from bullying her. But if Ulrich didn't exist, then Katarina probably wasn't there. So Regina probably never met Boris. But let's imagine a world where Boris was able to get some medical attention and he met Regina. Well, it's possible then in the origin world that Bartos could have existed. I don't think he does, but he could have. Okay, so that means we've got Cilia and Bartos. Now, the maths would put that around Cilia being probably about 10 years older than Bartos, around 10 years older. Again, weirder things have happened. Bartos gets to 25, Cilius 35. All of a sudden, we've got a world where it's possible that Agnes and Noah exist. Okay? So that's what I'm sort of driving at here. Technically, it's possible that Agnes and Noah exist. Now, I think that's probably the end of where that big knot uh, that, that we've, we saw on like Eva's floor, where all, all the, the thing came out. All, it all came from the origin and you know Jonas and Marta were the ones who created the origin that obviously isn't going to happen but Agnes and Noah is like the furthest we can get towards that you would need the unknown to exist to continue that and that's not going to happen because that's as we talked about last week the glitch in the matrix so the, the unknown couldn't exist um in this in this world however we can get as far as Noah and Agnes technically so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I, I was pretty happy with that. So if there's anyone else who could exist in the origin world, let me know. But um, as far as I'm aware, in terms of the main sort of not, that's where we get to. All right. So next, um, we have, the, if you go to the website, uh, darknetflix.io, I think it is, you can get the, uh, the origin family tree up. You have to actually go through, I, th I chose either Jonas or Alt Marta, and I just went through them really quickly. And then eventually all the images fade away and you get the origin family tree. If you haven't done it already, go and have a look around in that website. It's great. Uh, okay, so on this family tree, there's something that I want you to notice. On this family tree, there is the parents of Bernadette Voller, Benny Voller, and Torben Voller. So their parents both have question marks next to them, which is very interesting to me because we know who their mother is. Do you know who their mother is? Maybe you caught this, maybe you didn't. You're gonna find out now. They're, we don't know her name, so the question mark is correct. Okay, so the question marks are correct, but their mother is actually a nurse who works with Enos. Because in the first ever scene, we see 86 Enos. 
Okay, Belinda's gonna, gonna be happy with that. 86 Enos. Uh, the, the first time we see the uh, Enos, she's walking down the corridor and um, a nurse there says, would you mind covering for me? I have to take Benny to soccer. There we go. That's Benny and, Vol and Torben's mum. Okay, so that's just a little thing. If you didn't know that, that's really cool to note. Uh, who the dad is, I'm not sure. Do we do we ever see this character with a man at any point? Like maybe we see them in the background or I'm not sure, but that's the mum anyway. All right, guys. So, okay. So now this one's a weird one. On my 25 unanswered questions video where I got a load of views and there was a load of comments, I had a load of comments asking me, how can Regina uh, have different different fathers depending on which world she's from a lot of people said but how sh how is tron to her dad in the other world and burnt her dad in the origin world well the answer is burnt is her father in every world and i'm sure everyone watching this video knows that i'm sure everyone watching this video knows that but there was a few things now when tron said uh whenever he, he went and uh and murdered regina in in, in the post-apocalyptic world tron said i always thought she was my daughter um, and that was giving us the clue that this that's Claudia saying, no, she's not your daughter. Uh, because Claudia was explaining to Burnt how it is that she figured out that the, the knot existed. Okay? Because the knot exists, she figured out it exists because she realized that not everyone was involved in it. And that was sort of a bait and switch uh, or a red herring. Not, not a red herring, sorry. A bait and switch by the, uh, by the creators. Because the whole time we were led to believe that Tronta... And even Tronto was led to believe that he was Regina's father. Okay? Now, we were led to believe that. So we didn't find out until episode 7, I think, of season 3, that Tronta isn't her father. Now, most of us didn't even pick up on it then, because we had to wait till the very last scene in the series to have that confirmed, and that made us realize, oh my god, he's not her father. Okay? So that was a bait and switch by the creators. And that was sort of... They told us one thing, not they never told us it, but they they heavily implied one thing, and then it turned out to be the other. And that got us. That got us, you know. We were never gonna figure out the, the connection between Claudia finding out how the origin world exists and stuff. We were never gonna figure that out because we we all believed that Tronta was Regina's father. Now, Bert Doppler being the father makes a lot of sense. Okay? There's a lot of history to this. They've been building Claudia from series one. They've been building Claudia as the first ever female head of the power plant. And they made a, made a such big deal about this. Tronta even said, that's progressive, even for the 80s. So they built in the idea. Now, I'm not saying Claudia didn't deserve it. Of course she did. But they were building in the idea that she got to the top of the mountain in terms of the, uh, in terms of the power plant. You know, they were building that idea a lot. She's the first woman to do it. It sort of makes sense now. You know, not the not maybe not even that Burnt would uh, maybe not even the fact that Burnt would give uh, it to her because you know she was sleeping with him or whatever. No, I'm saying that probably it's because Burnt trusted her, and Burnt actually now whether or not their their relationship lasted in the other two worlds, I don't think it did, but Burnt trusted her. Okay, so he got to know, he knew her very intimately, and we know Burnt he would not have give he wanted to give the power plant, and he wanted the power plant to be taken over by someone who he he trusted and he knew would do a good job. So that was Claudia. Um, okay, so also uh, another thing is that um, Regina gets the hotel. So maybe like Helga didn't get get the hotel, the Doppler mansion. Helga didn't get that. So Burnt probably found out at some point. Because, I don't know, Greta probably passed away. I'm not sure where Greta, Greta is. Maybe she left once Burnt found out that Helga isn't really his. I don't really know. But uh, definitely, Burnt found that out. And then he didn't give the mansion to Helga. He gave the mansion to Regina, his real daughter. Okay? So, brilliant. I love that bit. I love that sort of part of the story. And I love that that's, that relationship there is what made Claudia realize. It's just great. Right, okay, so next. Really quick question. Could Jonas exist in the origin world? Because I know a lot of people now, again, probably no one watching this video, but I know a lot of people when they watched that last scene in, in, in the origin world said, and she and uh, Hannah said, I love, I've always liked the name Jonas. A lot of people were like, oh my God, Jonas is going to exist. Now, the only way that Jonas is going to exist is if Hannah actually cheated on Michael in the other two worlds with Torben. Which I suppose is is plausible. I don't think I don't think that's true, 
but it is plausible, I suppose. The idea of Jonas being born from Torben and Hannah instead of Michael and Hannah is, again, not, not true. They, they, it has to be the same parents. It has to be. Like, you know, they're not going to break that rule. So uh, my idea would be, if you want to go into a spiritual direction and say that it could be Jonas's soul, um, then I'm happy to go along with that. Um, I'm definitely happy to go along with that. But uh, then again, it might not be the case. All right? Uh, another thing is, as well, just before, I don't really have this one prepared too much, but it just reminded me, Charlotte, the baby Charlotte in the origin world is not the same Charlotte as the other one. Okay? Baby Charlotte in the origin world is is not the same Charlotte. That, that baby, they've never found the body because it's a baby in, in, in a lake. It's going to be hard to find. But uh, that is not the same Charlotte. That's something to remember. Okay? Some people did just assume it was the same Charlotte. Um, no. Hey you, yeah, you, why don't you make a comment and join the conversation. Alright guys, remember to put your comments into this YouTube video's comment section and I can go through and you can add to the discussion and we can, you know, have, have, a, have a good chat about it. Now, I'd like to see some people trying to talk about the one of the upcoming things. If you don't want to, if you just want to talk about what's in this video, brilliant, brilliant, no, no problem with that. But just, just in case you have any ideas what's what's coming up, alright? Okay, so Bill says, interesting theory that the time machine was smart a smart machine that predetermined the solution and outcome. I know he had to dial in a time, but it didn't look sophisticated enough to contain an AI that can control events and outcomes. Perhaps it's the nature of time to course correct and heal itself over time and cycles, which might be responsible for the outcome. I remember a scene uh, from one of the Matrix films in the architect's room, which shows hundreds of monitors with images of, Le of Neo. Like Dark, the world of the Matrix is caught in a loop and hundreds of iterations. Like the Deja Vu, it's just remembering a previous cycle. Uh, perhaps these cycles leave a mark in time even though these worlds do not, don't exist and is barely perceptible to, in the origin world. So Hannah is able to perceive it as Deja Vu in her world. Okay, that's interesting. Just, just to touch on the Matrix point at the end there. Um, there is an idea that each cycle is slightly different, which I'm not sure if I fully like that idea, because in my mind, it's like one cycle and infinity cycles. Like, it could only happen once, but because it happens once and it's a circle, it happens infinity times. You know, that's sort of what I'm thinking of. Um, but the idea of it happening different every cycle, it is backed up a little bit. I think that the, the article with with uh, Egon when he, when he was going to die, there's different writing in that, depending on which episode you watch, as well as that one time when Michael kills himself, it is... Uh, a daytime and not raining another time when he kills himself it's nighttime and it is raining so whether that's just them making th thematic decisions or whether that's actually hinting at different worlds and different uh, cycles i'm not sure but uh definitely the first part in terms of it being a smart machine like i i sort of i sort of talk about the machine finding the solution it might not be the machine that finds a solution it might yeah as you say it might just be time I'm happy enough with that. But the idea is that in the moment that the machine worked, time time reordered everything to work straight away. So whether it was the machine or time itself, it happened within a fraction of a second of that machine doing it. My idea is that it would all be predetermined from that point, you know? Um, and, you know, a little bit of evidence for anyone who disagrees with me there, in my mind, for that theory, you know, not necessarily what I truly, I don't really truly believe anything. It's just, you go through it down different avenues of analysis, you know? But in my opinion, that theory... Um, is backed up by the fact that Jonas and Altwata both saw each other in the lights tunnel, okay? Because they both saw each other as children, uh, therefore the children version saw them, so they were always predetermined to be there. They were always predetermined to be there, okay? Because everything's the same. They, they actually did see them when they were kids, you know, that sort of thing. All right, thanks, Bill. The middleman, Brent, says, so well done, beautiful. A cool thing I, I, I didn't notice at first, but caught on a rewatch was when Arigen Tan Tanhouse used the time machine, he clicked the two buttons. That's correct. And I pointed that out in my first Dark Discussions video. The origin world must have continued to exist as well, the tri tri Triketra. Uh, otherwise, Jonas and Altmata would not have been able to travel there. Um, okay, so this is the point, of, uh, Brent, I wanted to pick up on. I'm not going to go through everything here, but I don't, I don't have the time to do that. But the point I wanted to pick up, up, pick up on here is that the origin world did exist up until the point it was destroyed. So they were able to travel back... Uh, in time previous to 86 in the origin world because that was the point in which the world was destroyed okay so if you manage like if you imagine time as like a linear thing we have the origin world up to 86 then we have all of the alt worlds the two the prime and the alt world and then we have 
the new version of the origin world which continues so it does still exist and when they go into that time tunnel the light tunnel they can travel back to where the parts of the origin world that do exist they couldn't have traveled forward because they, that doesn't exist it doesn't exist past 86 okay that's my understanding all right now lastly this is actually uh something i wanted to talk about now donnie has been a really really kind kind fella and he's he's donated five dollars to me well he's bribed me with five dollars because he wants to get uh the parallels between lost and dark as a discussion topic now i value the input from all of you guys more than i value the money that donnie's given me having said that as it says there on the screen i'm listening right so what i thought if uh, if you want to support the show um, now, supporting the show doesn't mean just putting money in my pocket. Supporting the show means getting better cameras, getting better microphones, getting better backdrops, everything like that. Like, whatever I need to get for the show, all my money's going back in. All the money I make on YouTube or by your donations is all going back into the channel, okay? So, Donnie doing this, it's it's making me realize, if you do want to see a particular thing, then if you, if you throw me even a dollar, like, if you throw me any donation at all, then your suggestion will be put onto the poll. Okay, and I, my my aim is to keep everything on the poll until I either don't want it there anymore, which if you donate, it's not going to happen, or whether so, or if it gets chosen. Okay, so Donny, that's going on the poll. I'm not going to go out and just like sort of supersede the voting pr process, but it's going on the poll. So eventually, you'll get it. If anyone else wants something they definitely want to see, make sure you uh, you, you oh, sorry, not make sure you could you could just you could donate me anything you want. Five, one doesn't matter. Two doesn't matter. Okay, and I'll get it on the poll for you. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, right. Trigger warning. This segment has discussion about sexual abuse. Now it's time for the main event. This episode should be called Dark Detective because I have been using my detective skills to crack this case. Right? Now, I'm of course talking about Helen Albers and Katerina Albers and Herman Albers. Now, a lot of people, again, on my 25 Unanswered Questions video, commented and threw shade at me saying that I shouldn't uh, that I that I'm wrong about Helen uh, being abused in terms in terms of the way she she was able to uh, become pregnant with Katarina. I believe Katarina is the one true product of incest in this show. Okay? No one can convince me convince me otherwise there. I think the evidence is there even without the big breaking bit of uh, evidence that I found this week, okay? But that is definitely there. Okay, and it really, really, it really fits as well for me because Katarina is a product of incest, right? Now that abuse, that physical abuse of her mother, and then her mother abused her. Now not sexually abused her, but still she was she was an abusive parent. Katarina ended that. Katarina wasn't an abusive parent. She broke the cycle. Okay. Now I'm 100. percent uh, I 100 percent agree that the creators were trying to put in that idea of those cycles of abuse being being uh being broken uh, just take katarina's son magnus magnus is also he ex one of the reasons why he exists in the show and his character is to break the cycle of adultery both his father and his grandfather were adulterers okay so they they were unfaithful to their to their wives magnus is not that magnus is not that type of man he's much he's much more empathetic he's much he, he gives his mum a hug he, katarina and magnus are sort of two piece in a pod for me okay so that is one of the reasons why I believe that Katarina is a product of incest, okay? And she exists in the origin world, so she is a real product of incest, okay? And this is why I think so. For the first thing, okay, for I'll go through my old evidence for anyone who didn't see that other video. My old evidence, uh, evidence is um, that Herman Albers, okay, uh, has the same name as Helen Albers, whenever Helen is 13 going to get an abortion. So Helen was already called Helen Albers. She says that's her name at that moment when she's talking to Hannah. So if that's her name, Helen Albers, and Herman Albers is already called that, I do not believe that she was married at that age. Okay? So if she was married at that age, well, that would make sense, but I don't believe that. She was, they showed us very purposely that she's going to get an abortion because she was abused. Okay, that's what I believe. So now, if Herman Albers was an abuser, the question then comes in all the time. Well, just look at look at the age of Katarina's mother when Katarina's a teenager. 
Therefore, if she was a product of incest, that would mean Herman Albers must have abused her whenever she was in her late 20s. That, and they say, that doesn't make sense. Now, I agree with that. I agree with that. It would be pretty weird. Would it be, would it be impossible for Herman Albers to still have a control over, over her at, at, in her late 20s? No, it wouldn't be impossible. Okay? But here's the thing. I did some digging. Now, as the people who listen to the After Dark podcast know, I am listening, I'm watching the show completely the whole way through with the dub because uh, I've never watched it with the dub before and I'm trying to look for funny things, you know, and, and, and give my inta- insight on the dub. Now, what I noticed on the dub this time, okay, so this is sort of like mini what the dub segment here for uh, Dark Discussions, but what I noticed was depending on which version you listen to, it gives different information in a pivotal scene with Helen Albers. So in episode two of season two, when e- when uh, Egon goes to, to visit Ulrich in the mental institution and Helen, uh, before we knew it was her, but Helen is standing there behind the desk. Now, this is the interesting part. In the German audio version, okay, and I've translated it, it's true. In the German audio version, whenever he sa- uh, Egon asks about Ulrich and they say, she says, oh, the inspector, she says, He's been here longer than most of the staff. That's what she says. In the English subtitles, it says the same. He's been here longer than most of the staff. Now, here's the interesting part. The bit of evidence which blows the case wide open. In the English dub, she says, He's been here since before I was born. Get it? The character was only supposed to be 33 or 34. Now, I know what you're saying to me. It's the dub. Who cares about the dub? They wouldn't change that. What is the point of changing that? Come on. Us English speakers, would we really not understand the sentence? Uh, we, we, we really wouldn't understand the sentence. Oh, she's been here. Uh, he's, he's been here longer than, the, uh, than, than most of the staff. We wouldn't understand that. Of course we would. The reason why they say he's been here longer than I've been alive is because my opinion, this is my guess, and this is my theory. On set that day, they realized that the actress they had cast was too old. Okay, maybe maybe they got this this actress because they really wanted this actress and she was really good, and they just thought, ah, well, it doesn't matter about the whole incest storyline at the minute. You know, we we just get a really good. We'll just get her because she's really good, right? But, in my opinion, she was cast, and then they didn't change the script. And then on the set on the day, they were like, oh, we can't really say this anymore because this actress is too old. So they got her to say about most staff. But the script that was sent to the dub still had the original line. The original line said, he's been here longer than I've been alive. There you go, guys. That's the theory, and that is a bit of evidence that backs it up. You might think I'm nuts for paying any attention to the dub whatsoever. But come on, what's your answer? Why was that that line included if not something tricky is going on here? I honestly believe the original line that they wrote in the script was, he's been here longer than I've been alive. That's my personal belief. Having said that, I, I already thought that uh, that uh, Helen was a... You know, uh, Katarina was a product of incest. I already thought that. Um, but this is just something that, funny that I found while watching the dub that I thought really gets it. And the funny thing was, when I heard it, I was like, oh my God. And then I went to the German version and it didn't say that. And I was like, oh. Then I realized that was the original script. Right, let me know what you think in the comments. Remember, Dark Discussions is on audio apps from now on. The uh, the poll is up right now. And the, the I've got four topics this, this week. We've got Claudia Character Study again. We've got Parallels to Lost, which is the one Donnie suggested. We've got A Chat with My Mum. Now, my mum has seen Dark, but it's absolutely hilarious because she can't remember anything about it. So she remembers some things, but not everything. I remember I said to her, uh, after watching the whole, she's watched the whole thing. And I said to her, who's Ulrich? And she said, now hang on now, wait a minute now. So that's going to be hilarious. I hope to do that one day, have a chat with my mum. The other thing I want to do is to have a chat about costume with my wife. My wife is a costume, she works in the costume department of film and TV, okay? So she worked on Game of Thrones. She's worked on a load, a load of different uh, different things. So uh, getting her perspective on the costumes within Dark would be great. So let me know what you want to do there and I'll, uh, I'll make sure to carry that out next week. Apart from that, subscribe on audio apps 
Uh, it's newly up, so that'd be great if you could subscribe on those. Uh, leave a comment down below if you want to have a chat about what we've talked about today. Um, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And why not? Give us a little like. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you.